Dimension is a term that we use to describe the size of space. This could apply to height, length, width, or depth. When it comes to describing art, we usually only talk about things being either two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Sometimes we can get into the fourth dimension, but that comes along way later than the timeline I am trying to provide. In this course, we begin with only two dimensions, when we analyze works of art from prehistoric time periods. One of the prime examples of this would be the Lascaux cave paintings, as all of the figures that we see painted on the wall are only two-dimensional. Once we start getting into later ancient civilizations, we start getting into artists understanding how to create the illusion of depth on a two-dimensional surface. It is this introduction to depth that would give us three-dimensional appearing works of art that would revolutionize art as we know it forever. That is why I would like to examine how this discovery of adding faux depth to create lifelike scenes affected art as a whole and how it changed the way that we appreciate and understand art. When we take a look at the Lascaux cave paintings, we can see that there are plenty of images of animals painted on the walls. This could be a sign of the primitive beginnings of art, as there isn't much to the animals except a rough outline to their overall shape. This is a perfect example of the limited perspective and depth that the early paintings had in the art world. Not much realistic details could be added to the works of art because people didn't really understand the concept of mathematics or dimensions yet. As a result, we get art in just about its rawest form with a meaning that may have been extremely simple to the viewers of the past. Its purpose was to tell a story and to send a message to those that viewed the flat 2D images of man and animals. There was not much to it than that. The color palette was also limited to black and shades of red and brown. Essentially, without depth and realism, there is not much to analyze except for the simple animals and the symbolism that is often attributed to them. That is one of the issues that two-dimensional art faced as it was something so simple and direct that there was no awe or appreciation attributed to it. It was just simply a story or message to be relayed to one another. When we progress to the Greeks and their civilization, we find a better understanding of mathematics and anatomy. This would seem to be the perfect recipe when we look at art because it finally gave the artist a model to use while creating the grand works of art. With this understanding of mathematics, the Greeks were able to use fantastic three-dimensional modeling that reflected in their sculptures and mosaics. One of the best examples of this would be the Alexander mosaic. In the mosaic, we see master class usage of foreshortening in the bodies of Darius and Alexander during battle. It is this technique that makes the image itself come to life as it makes it appear as though they're going to jump from inside the image. Along with this technique, we can see there is a new element of depth in the way that the images are arranged. We can see that the ground and the sky shape the artwork to create this depth and give it feeling of vastness to the background that helps make it feel three-dimensional. Finally, there can't be enough said about the modeling, the molding of the character using shadows and shading to create the feeling of realistic images. Down to the reflection of the soldiers' faces on the shield, there is the utmost attention to dimension and to help create a dynamic and dimensional artwork. It is here that we see the usage of dimension to become crucial to artists to create images that appeal to the viewer. No longer is it just rough outlines and flat figures that are used for the sole purpose of ritual and information. At this point in time, art is finally beginning to take its shape of something to show off and stare at in awe and appreciation. It is all thanks to the advancement of dimension and creating a pleasing aesthetic for viewers. It would be this technique of dimension and modeling the human form that artists in the Renaissance would look back for further guidance. The final work of art and the last step of progression in the context of the course is The Birth of the Virgin, a painted triptych by Pietro Lorenzetti. This was painted about 60 some years before we see the start of the Renaissance in Italy. This classifies as medieval art, and we can see that the religious imagery somewhat cements that. We are witnessing the birth of the Virgin Mary in this piece as it would be suiting as she was a protector of Siena, where this triptych would be displayed. What is most important is the techniques that were used to create the mention in this triptych. What's most important is that we are looking at a contemporary 13th century bedroom in Siena that is being used as a background for the birth of the Virgin. This would of course not have been where the actual event would have taken place, 
With that being said, we can see the extreme attention to detail that is taken to give this a three-dimensional feel. It seems as if we're looking in from a window to the room itself and the room that adjoins it to see the, ver the birth of the Virgin and the characters that would be assisting in her birth. We can see an excellent use of space in the bed and the chest upon which Anne, the mother of Mary, is laying upon. Where it's most notable is in the ceiling. We can see the rounding of the ceiling and the vaulting of it. We can see actual dimension as though there is a height in the painting. We can see it in full three-dimensional perspective. The windows have depth to them as well. Thanks to shading and usage of color, it almost seems as though we can look out of them. This technique can be seen in the figures themselves as the shading gives them life and makes them seem almost real. In the room, this is not linear perspective, but it is the closest and most expertly executed pieces portraying architecture in the 13th century before we get introduced into linear perspective perspective in the Renaissance. This is where we finally see dimensions have a full role in art. While we are far away from creating simple shapes and outlines, why we didn't stick to that is important. With dimension through shading, color choice, and foreshortening, we are able to paint real people. We are able to create real contemporary settings, whether it be the interior or exterior of buildings. This adds a whole new level to how art is perceived and appreciated, because now it is something that is familiar to those that view them. And in the case of medieval art and later Renaissance art, it's the reason that a lot of people can identify with Catholicism and Christianity. Since the majority of the population couldn't read the Bible, they relied on the depictions of events by artists. And since artists can make the scenes with people and places that they could identify with, this made it so much more relatable and easier to align with. Sure, the usage of art for ritual, as it was in the Lascaux paintings, is still there, but it became much more than that. With the implementation of dimension, we can see contemporary imagery that people can view and marvel at. No longer is it about a simple message, but seeking art that appeals to each person's own aesthetic. This would become the driving force for art in the modern era and the contemporary era, which is why the discovery and implementation of dimension in art is so crucial to the development of how we view and appreciate art. We move from rough outlines to clearly defined architecture to help aid the viewer in appreciating the beauty of art.